Hi, my name is Richard Curtis. I'm an imaging consultant for Adobe here in the UK. In this video today, we'll be talking about the workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop and how to make your edits non-destructive for much, much longer. For this, we'll be exploring smart objects inside Photoshop for Creative Cloud. The difference between Photoshop and Lightroom is that Lightroom is great for enhancing our pictures and making small adjustments. But for image manipulation and making much bigger changes, we need to go into Photoshop to do that. But for example, there might be a part of a picture that needs removing. Now, we can do that inside Lightroom using the Clone Heal tools, but sometimes it's much more complex than that. There are many tools inside Photoshop that we can use for our image editing and image manipulation. Sometimes we can use simply the Content Aware tools, but other times we might need to use something like the Adaptive Wide Angle to fix any barrel distortion or any issues with the lens. And we'll look at that in this demonstration today. But whichever way you want to work using Lightroom or Photoshop or a combination of the two, is a great way to make beautiful images. Smart objects are effectively a container that contains your layers inside any Photoshop document. It effectively allows you to wrap up those layers and compress them like in a zip file, but then use a single layer rather than those multiple layers to make your edits on. What it does do is it enables you to keep your edits non-destructive for a much longer time. It's great to use smart objects for editing but also smart objects enables Photoshop to perform better because you're not working on the whole layer stack that you tend to work with in Photoshop. Effectively, because you're almost zipping up those layers, you're actually giving more performance benefits to Photoshop so you can work on your images in a much faster way and a much more efficient way. You're also, in Photoshop, not having to navigate between all of those layers. You can compress the layers into one and work on, work on that as a single layer. At any point in time, you can go into that layer and open up the smart object to reveal all the layers inside it, and then you can work on those layers independently. Once you've finished working with those layers, you can then save those layers as that smart object, and it will then recompress it and put it back into the layer that you were working with originally. You're able to utilize this technology between Lightroom or even between Bridge and open up your contents from Lightroom or Bridge as a smart object inside Photoshop. Effectively, what you're doing is you're going to take the raw file and any metadata changes that you make inside Lightroom, and you're going to put them into a smart object. Then you're going to use that to edit. Now, it's a great workflow. It's a little bit new, so it might take a little while to get into your workflow, but it's definitely something worth practicing. The other benefit, of course, of using smart objects is that you can obviously then save the PSD file or the TIFF file and then at a future date, open the PSD or TIFF file up, then continue with your edits, either at a raw level or actually at a Photoshop level yourself. So you're never having to flatten the files down like you used to have to do. You can keep them alive for much, much longer. So let's look at the traditional workflow that people have been using for a long time between Lightroom and Photoshop. So here's a picture I have inside Lightroom, and I want to work on this inside Photoshop. The traditional way of doing that would be to press Command-E or Control-E on a PC, and that will then send that file to Photoshop. But what it will do is it will render any adjustments that I've made inside Lightroom in Lightroom and then pass over to Photoshop the final PSD or TIFF file, which means I've rasterized this file much, much earlier in my workflow, which is okay. But if I want to go back and re-edit the raw file settings that I made before I came to Photoshop, I can't do that. Before we bring this into Photoshop and show you how this works, I'm just going to make a couple of changes so you can see how this works inside Photoshop a little bit later on. So I'm going to move this picture into the development mode. I've made sure my profile corrections are turned on. This will help you, especially with that Canon glass. They will make sure that any vignetting or any barrel distortion is fixed in Lightroom before you start working on this picture. It's quite important you do that. In the basic panel, I'm just going to work on my white point and my black point. I'm going to use the Alt key to see where I'm clipping the blacks. I could also press the J key as well. And I got to a point that I quite like. Now I'm going to bring that into Photoshop. So I'll right click on the image, edit in Photoshop as a smart object. What this will now do is it will take the adjustments that I've made inside Lightroom and the raw file and then combine them into the smart object. That will leave me with a single layer inside Photoshop. Inside that layer though, are the adjustments that I've made inside Lightroom and the raw object itself. So you see how it's a container for that data. Okay, now it's inside Photoshop, you can start working with Photoshop normally. So for example, um, I might want to place um, an adjustment layer on this picture. 
and I might want to say use curves. So I'm going to place a curve adjustment layer on here and I'm going to give this a little S curve just to boost the contrast a little bit. So it's only slight. But now I've made an adjustment inside Photoshop, I may suddenly decide that I want to go back to the raw file to change something. But now of course it's a smart object and I have that data inside that container file. I can then double click on that layer. It now opens up inside Camera Raw. There's no direct link between Photoshop and Lightroom, but there is a link between Photoshop and Camera Raw. The Camera Raw engine is exactly the same as in the development module of Lightroom. It's the same technology, so the adjustments come through the same. And you can see that here. If I look at the white point and the black point, you can see these are exactly the same settings that are made inside Lightroom. Now I can continue working with my file, and maybe the white point is too much, so I can dial that back a little bit, press OK, and it reprepares the smart object and applies that change for me. What I might want to do inside Photoshop at this point is maybe fix some problems with the uh, angle of view. When I took this picture, I was slightly off center of the monks that are running up and down these steps. And of course you can see that because the top layer of the brickwork is all at an angle. Now I could try and use upright, but I don't think upright is really gonna fix that for me. So I might want to use something inside Photoshop and that I might want to use as the adaptive wide angle. So the adaptive wide angle is under the filter menu. These filters now work on smart objects. The difference between the filters now and the filters in the old version of Photoshop is that you had to apply the filter and it would make that change. You can never go back and re-edit it. But now these filters are available on smart objects. It means that I can now re-edit any adjustments that are made using the filters. So for example, I can click on adaptive wide angle, which will open this inside the adaptive wide angle filter. So I'm just gonna move the crop factor just to bring it back into line so I can see the canvas. So now I can go outside of the canvas if I need to do. The adaptive wide angle is a great way to tell Photoshop how to fix this image based upon the lines that occur inside the picture. I'm not allowing Photoshop to do it automatically. I'm gonna tell Photoshop exactly what to correct by just drawing lines on the picture. So for example, this top line here, I like to be straight in the scene. I'm just gonna use my mouse and draw a line across the scene. Once I release, it then places the line on the picture. By right clicking on that line, I can now tell Photoshop to fix this to either the horizontal or the vertical. In this case, it'll be the horizontal. And you can see there how Photoshop recreates this to put it exactly on the horizontal line. But of course, everything's moved out of perspective now by basically putting that in place. So I need to go recorrect the image based upon that change. So I need to go and change this side of the picture and tell it to be straight. So I'm just gonna pull a line down, get it roughly about where it needs to be. And this needs to be on the vertical. So I'm just going to right click on this line and affix to the vertical. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing the other side. Right click, affix to the vertical. And I'm just gonna fix the bottom of this scene. I right click on this last section and affix this to the horizontal too. And you can see there how I've corrected the perspective on this image very, very quickly. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna press OK. And because this is on a smart filter, it will automatically add the filter to the bottom of the stack and give me a layer mask at the same time. So I'm just gonna crop the picture now. I want to keep the tree in shot. So I'm just gonna see if I can do that using the crop tool. And I'm actually using the crop in a way at the current time, which is gonna delete the pixels. But for, to make this really non-destructive, I'm gonna have it turned off. So it means I'm gonna keep any pixel data and actually the crop will work like Lightroom, which is non-destructive, which means I can go back at any point in time and re-edit the crop, even in the future after I've saved the file as a PSD or a TIFF file. So you can see here, I'm just gonna crop this where it needs to be. It's gonna lose a little bit of that, um, that top veranda, which I'm okay with. I'm gonna pull this in and I'm just then going to commit that by pressing the enter key. And now because I've done the crop, it'll recalculate the adaptive wide angle and put that back into place for me. And there you have it. Now, of course, the beauty is that I might want to go back to my original raw file and do something now 
in the raw file settings even after I've made the curves adjustment or the adaptive wide angle adjustment, okay? Now, if I don't have this as a smart object, there's no way I can go back and fix this inside the raw engine, so I'm gonna to have to do it now. But I can do that very easily by just double clicking on that smart object, which will load up the original raw file and the settings from Lightroom. And now I can go in and maybe boost the clarity a little bit to give it some more mid-tone contrast. I may want to change the exposure slightly, just to lift it a little bit. Once I've finished doing that, I can press OK, and it will go back and it will then re-render the smart object, but also will apply the um, smart filter as well. So reapply the adaptive wide angle on that change. And you can see how I'm not having to commit to a flattened PSD or a flattened TIFF file, but actually keep my raw editing process running much, much longer in my cycle. And there you go. So what I can now do is I can save that using Command and S, and that will save that back into Lightroom. That save is now completed, so I'm just gonna close that file down and go back into Lightroom and show you the workflow of how to reopen that from Lightroom when you've used Lightroom as an organizer. So you can see in Lightroom, once I've saved that file from Photoshop, it'll put it next to the raw file inside Lightroom, which means I can find it very easily. If I need to stack them together, I can stack them using Lightroom as well. But I want to re-edit this inside Photoshop. Now, it's already a smart object and it's a PSD file as you can see here on the screen. So I don't need to open that again as a smart object because that will rewrap this up as a smart object, which isn't what I want. What I'm going to do is open this using the traditional method of Control E or Command E on a Mac and open this inside Photoshop. Light will then ask me if I want to open the original or open a copy or open a copy with Lightroom adjustments. We haven't made any inside Lightroom. So once I'm inside Photoshop and make adjustments inside Photoshop, I won't then reapply my Lightroom adjustments or do anything inside Lightroom. I just stay inside Photoshop. So now I go into edit the original, which is the PSD file. And once I open it up, it will then show me the changes that I made last time, which is the adaptive wide angle lens change and the curves change. And again, if I double click now on the smart object, you can see it will take me into the camera raw file settings that I had previously. So here's a great way to keep your workflow non-destructive for much, much longer by using smart filters from Lightroom. If you're inside Bridge, you can open it using Open in Camera Raw. Let's see how that works from Camera Raw. So if I'm working in Bridge, I can open my raw file inside Camera Raw by right-clicking on the file and opening in Camera Raw. It will then open the file inside Camera Raw for me before we get into Photoshop. I can then make my adjustments so I can set my black point like I did before on the white point. But this time I can press the Shift key and see when I press the Shift key, the open image changes to open object. What this will do is it will then tell Camera Raw to open in Photoshop as a smart object by keeping the raw file and the changes that I've made in Camera Raw as a separate file inside the smart object. You can see now in Photoshop, I've got exactly the same position as I had before from Lightroom, only the start point was Camera Raw. And I can do exactly the same thing, double click on this layer, it will open that up inside Camera Raw, ready for me to rework those adjustments that I made inside, um, inside Camera Raw initially. If you're working on the PSD file from Bridge, you can obviously just right click on the PSD file, open that in to Photoshop, and it will then open it as a normal PSD file, and then you can still access the, um, you can still access the Camera Raw file by just double clicking on the layer, and it opens it up into Camera Raw for you. So hopefully that's given you good insight into how smart objects work, both from Lightroom and from Camera Raw, and a way for you to keep your edits non-destructive for much, much longer inside your workflow. So thanks very much, and we look forward to seeing you again, and uh, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye now.